Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Katja and this time I'm making some accessories to complete my 1840s look. Here I have my wig head ready. I have some scrap cotton that I can use to drape a cap. These kinds of caps came in many shapes and were worn indoors. The simplest one was a flat cap that was basically a flat piece of frilly lace, tulle and bows pinned on the top of the head. Many caps also had ear pieces that hung down from both sides like poodle ears. I'll pin the fabric to the head and then sketch the approximate shape on it. Let's cut it out. I have to brooch down! Not too bad. After I took a mirror and looked at the back of the cap, I decided to trim the pack a bit. Okay, now I have this cotton tool. I have lots of it. And I have my cap pattern. But I have to figure out how I'm going to use this scallop edge. It's a bit problematic if I just leave it like this. Another way is to have, to have that at the back. I decided to place the scalloped edge at the back. Due to the embroidered edge, I cut the air flap separately out of non-embroidered part of the tool. Okay, now here is my lace cap. I have this idea that if I just this here, it's a bit funny looking because there is like a square here. But if I do this, I take this part and gather it like this. actually forms to the head and looks kind of nice and if I add this lace bit here it will work and then just add the ears or just some ribbons and stuff so I'll do that To be honest, this is nylon, but well, nobody's gonna know. And I don't have anything better to fit this color of lace. And right now, I don't feel like dyeing anything. So I'll just add this here. Now the cap only needs some embellishments. I have this fabric flower that looks nice and festive. This velvet ribbon works nicely with the flower and I can use it to hide the seam between the cap and the ear flaps.
next thing I want to make is a bonnet. 1840s bonnets were smaller and less extravagant than their predecessors in the 1830s. Velvet was a popular material in winter bonnets. The pattern for this bonnet comes from the book Victorian Dressmaker Companion, Hats, Caps and Bonnets. I have this small piece of buckram, which was almost big enough to cut the bonnet pattern, but piecing is period. I figured I could cut the bonnet in three pieces and enforce the seam in the middle with an extra strip of buckram. To smooth out the top of the bonnet, I add a layer of felt interfacing. I glue the buckram and the felt together with this ladix glue to make the sewing easier later. Next, I sew a wire to the edge. This wire is nothing special. A millinery wire might create a slightly smoother edge, but this hardware store wire works pretty well. I use a zigzag stitch and go slowly so that I don't end up breaking my needle. Now I can sew the back seam of the bonnet. This is a short seam, so I just stitch it by hand. To make the pattern for the back of the bonnet, I turn the bonnet on its back and trace the circle to a piece of paper. Then I cut the back pieces out of buckram and felt. I didn't bother to wire this edge, as the wire edge of the bigger piece will be enough support. I zigzag the pieces together though, and then sew the back on by hand. This red velvet that I've had in my stash for ages makes a perfect lining for the bonnet. First I sewed the pieces together, then I pinned the lining onto the hat base.
I fastened the lining to the back of the bonnet by sewing through the crown seam. Next, I baste the edge of the lining to the rim. For the outer fabric, I used green cotton velvet. I first sewed the big pieces together and placed them on the top of the bonnet. I whipped the edge. Then I add the round back piece and fold the seam allowances under. I sew the back in place by hand. I made a long bias strip out of the same green velvet and now use it to finish the bonnet edge. I folded the bias strip over the rim to inside and turned the edge under. I finished the inner edge by hand. I did more digging through my stash and found this green silk cotton batiste. I had meant to make a blouse out of it, but figured I could spare a strip. It took ages to fell the edges of this strip that was 150cm long, but I didn't want to use the machine for it. I tried to make pretty folds with the green band. I then stitched the band in place at both ends. Now I wanted to add some color. I don't know how hysterical this looks, but this red Christmas ribbon just looked so good with the green that I wanted to make a little looby embellishment out of it. My regular grocery store surprised me by having these paper roses in the paper and crafts ale. This was just perfect addition. Victorian bonnets also had decorations on the inside. For that I took this green ribbon. I first folded it and sewed the folds on with the machine. Then I started lifting the folds up in this manner and sewing the edges together like this. Now this finished green ribbon thingy is a great base for gluing on more paper roses, as I don't want to glue anything onto the bonnet itself. The final accessory to make is a velvet mantle. A mantle is basically a short cloak. During the 19th century mantles were worn by women over their indoor clothing when they went outside. They may have also been called dolmans or pelerins. A short version could be called mantlet or mantelet. I don't have a pattern for this, but I have seen many examples of mantles, so that I can make a pattern that works. I used the pattern pieces from the dress to get the shoulder seam at the right place. I then continue the line from the shoulders to separate the back and front pieces. The neckline for the mantle needs to be much smaller than that of the dress. 
This line makes the front edges. I'm turning the front neckline into a sort of V. Next, I'm sketching the hem of the mantle. The mantles usually curve in at the front to leave room for the arms, or alternatively they have slits for the hands to go through. Now we can try this pattern out. The back is cut on the fold. I add the seam allowances while cutting. For this, one doesn't need to be so accurate. I also need the two front pieces. I pin and then sew the side seams. Try this on. And it's a little bit big. So I took in from here already so that my shoulders fit better. But I think this is a little bit big looking. So I'm going to trim away just a little bit here and from the back to make it look a little bit lighter before I cut the actual lining. I trim away the extra fabric at the edge. Now that I have a pattern, I can cut the lining that is made out of this pretty cotton flannel. I prefer sewing the lining on by hand, but this time I was under a time limit and I had to use my machine. Now we jump forward a bit. The mandal is now lined and turned the right way around. Now I'm basting on this fringed hem. This was actually originally orange and green trim, but I dyed it red to match my mantle's Christmassy colors. I also had this lighter ribbon. Finally, I decided to add it as well. The red fringe trim was very stiff due to the thick soutage cord on it. On a whim, I tried unpicking it. First, I thought of using the soutage for something, but I finally abandoned the idea. Instead, I turned the now less stiff fringe into two tassels that I sewed together by hand and attached to the corners of the mantle. To finish the mantle off, I added a hook and eye closure. A hanging loop will also be handy in a piece of outerwear like this. Finally, I added ribbons to the sides that can be used to tie the front and the back together to create some sort of sleeves. This improves the drape of the mantle and pulls the sides closer, which makes the mantle warmer.
Thank you for watching. Hyvää joulua, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays for all my viewers. If you like videos like this, subscribe to my channel. See you soon. Bye!